Hello, welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Paul Alster with you back home after being away for the last uh, three weeks uh, all over the place, but uh, back to home soil now and looking forward to some great racing on Saturday, the 20th of November. And I've got four recommendations for you and a few of them are at uh, pretty tasty prices, I can tell you. If you're joining us for the first time, then uh, please press the subscribe button just below this screen. And uh, then uh, you'll be uh, alerted to all new bulletins that I put out on this uh, free uh, tipping service that has had so much uh, success overall over the last uh, 18 months. Although it has to be said, the first two bulletins of November have hardly uh, uh, added to the tally because it's been a quiet start to the month, having had three winning months prior uh, to the start of November. And last week, well, I put up three selections, uh, one of which was a non-runner, so we were down to two. And uh, Barry Milsey, I thought he was a bit disappointed, went out a bit tamely uh, over at Cheltenham. Spirit of the Games, well, he ran well. He stayed on nicely in the closing stages, but uh, never quite getting to them. He did make a lot of ground from the second last and was coming home well, but uh, that wasn't his day. Um, I suspect he will pick up a nice little prize somewhere along the way. It wouldn't surprise me if somewhere like Aintree uh, is going to suit him best. Anyway, those are the big odd selections. Uh, but if you're interested in shorter rods, then um, I've uh, been broadcasting over at freebets.com on the YouTube channel and uh, looking at the head of the market, more towards the head of the market to be more accurate, some still value bets. And once again, last week, I was on the target with a winner in two seconds. So do check that out at free bets if you want to consider one that's maybe just a little bit shorter, but still invariably at least a working man's price. Anyway, on to the first of four selections for this Saturday. And I'm tipping at Gowron Park and at Haydock. And the first is at Gowron Park. And it's in the very first race of the day there, the 12 noon, two and a half mile beginners chase. Now, I bet a lot of you who have been looking ahead to the weekend haven't even cast a glance at the beginner's chase at Gowron Park. But I promise you, if you take a look, you'll see potentially one of the hottest races for potential star novice chasers that we'll have seen so far this season and possibly even uh, up to the Christmas period. This is a two and a half mile beginner's chase. The going is yielding to soft. There are 18 runners. I'd say of the 18, 10 of them, you can probably discount straight away. Uh, of the other eight, there are some real standout uh, interesting horses. Now, this really is an absolute cracker to start your Saturday uh, racing at 12 noon. And it wouldn't be out of place, I don't think, later in the season as a potential grade one, given the horses in contention. Now, odds on the forecast is about one to two, two to five. Henry de Bromhead's Bob Ollinger. Now, you may remember Bob Ollinger, who uh, won the Grade 1 Ballymore Novices Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival in March. That was a brilliant performance. He really is a very exciting chasing prospect, but he's 2-5 to five on his first run in public in a beginner's chase in a big field where there'll be some uh, pretty galumphin, uh, clumsy horses in and amongst. And so he just needs to have the slightest bit of bad luck or misjudge one of the fences, and 2-5 to five is going to look a ridiculous price. Now, he may well go and win because he's a very smart horse. But how many times have we seen horses in the early days of their novice chasing or beginner's chase careers uh, come a cropper? So for me, I'm not interested, uh, never am, uh, odds on, but particularly two to five first time out in a beginner's chase. Now, another very smart horse in the lineup is Jesse Harrington's Ashdale Bob, who won a grade two uh, novice hurdle at Fairy House last season and uh, was second in a grade one at Punchestown. So, I mean, this is another very high class recruit to the novice chase field and he's another who is of interest now among the others is a fascinating runner good old Bacardi's trained by Willie Mullins uh, he is almost 11 years old so he's quite an age to be going back to uh, beginners chases he did have a few attempts a few seasons ago but essentially is a fine staying hurdler who you may recall finished third in the uh, 2020 stayers hurdle uh, at Cheltenham, I think it was behind uh, listener Gar Oscar. So he uh, adds a bit of spice to the mix. And then we've got Gordon Elliott with two runners. The first of them runs in the JP McManus green and gold colours called Coccolino. Now he's less exposed than some of the others. He won another maiden hurdle in March uh, and could potentially be able to do a lot of improvement and he's bred to make a chaser. 
Now, the other runner for Gordon Elliott is called Column of Fire. Now, this one um, fell when upside in the 2020 Martin Pipe Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, he was upside indefatigable, who's gone on to prove to be a very, very good hurdler. Uh, he didn't make any show in just one outing last season, so he's obviously had some training issues. Uh, but he's one to keep an eye on, especially if there's a market move. But I'm chancing my arm here with a horse at a decent price. And the horse in question is called Diol Kerr. And he's trained by old friend of this channel, Noel Mead, who, of course, did us that great favour at Cheltenham uh, last season with the wonderful 80-1 to 1 winner, Jeff Kidder. Well, this time he's training Diol Kerr. And the jockey on board is the very promising Irish conditional, Owen Walsh, who claims five pounds. Now, the interesting thing about Deal Carr is that he's rated within just a few pounds of Bob Ollinger. So he was certainly no slouch uh, over hurdles. He was second in a grade two at Gowron Park over three miles in heavy ground in January, only beaten half a length. And uh, then he ran in two grade one events, one at Aintree and one at Punchestown without really uh, distinguishing himself. Now, is a horse who... Noel Mead has spoken of in glowing terms time and again in stable tours over the last few seasons. He obviously feels this horse has latent ability and could eventually make it very big in the chasing sphere. Now, he actually, as a novice hurdler two years ago this month, beat Monkfish and he beat him comfortably um, over at Fairy House over two and a half miles. Now, he did have four runs over fences subsequently, fell twice. So I don't think there's any uh, hiding it. He's a bit clumsy over his fences, but he's sure to be a well-schooled. One of the times he did complete was against old rival Monkfish, who, of course, as we know, is a very, very smart chaser. And he ran fourth, having been within a length of him, uh, going down towards the final fence. And that was in a fairy house novice chase 12 months ago. So I just think this horse is of some interest because he's highly regarded by an excellent trainer. And um, if he gets his act together over fences, uh, he could be the value in this race, especially each way. And I think he's a sporting call, even though, as we've seen, he's fallen in two of his previous four chases. He could fall. But if he gets round, I fancy him to at least finish in a place. And if anything untoward happens to Bob Arlinger or Ashdale Bob, I think he'll be right there. And at odds of 16 to 1 each way, that's at the time of this recording. And that's with a number of firms as of Friday lunchtime. I think Dior Kerr, could get us off to a very good start in the 12 noon race at Gowron Park on Saturday. Well, my first of three recommendations at uh, Haydock is the 12.40, a three and a half mile handicap chase, 11 run. Good to soft ground, a very open affair where they're betting four to one the field. Of course, the ground not as soft as you'd normally get at this time of year, and we've seen plenty of small fields. And this has made punting and tipping quite difficult, especially for those like me that like to get our teeth into a big field uh, handicap. Uh, uh, and that certainly has impacted on the number of races I can focus on. I have to say though as well, I think there's too much racing and uh, I'm very much an advocate for having a day off during the week. I mean, how many of you wake up on a Monday morning and say, I'm so excited about racing this Monday, Clumpton, Wolverhampton and Hexham. My, my God, no, we could do with a day off, I think um, it would make everybody in the industry a little bit uh, better and perkier. And I think maybe that would help um, mitigate these small fields we're getting as the climate changes and we get drier uh, ground, especially at this time of year. But anyway, onto this um, three and a half mile handicap chase. An amateur is the horse I think we'll see starting favourite here for John Flint, a horse who's been very much in form of late. And um, he's uh, up uh, 11 pounds for his last win which was at false last over three and a half miles i'm not so sure he's going to be good enough in this grade this is quite a step up in class for him so not one for me uh, amateur now silver eclipse represents sue smith a brilliant trainer of staying chases as we know and he ran well for a long way on his return at sedgefield last month um he's gone down a couple of pounds and i think he'll be there or thereabouts now, Jersey Bean for Oliver Sherwood, who's just moved to new stables, and I think he sent out his first winner from the yard just the other day. He's got top weight. He won three last season from his last five starts, so it's very progressive. And he's only two pounds higher than his win at Cheltenham in April. And I think he'll be better for a recent reappearance at Cheltenham uh, last month. So Jersey Bean, not without hope. And then a difficult to pronounce one trained by Oliver Greenall called 
Phidias de Sierges or something. Um, he's two pound wrong at the way. He's just out of the handicap, but he's run well his last two starts, including his third at Cheltenham to strictly a dancer. But my choice here is um, a horse called De Future is Bright. He's trained by the fairly flamboyant Christian Williams down there in Wales, and Jarrett Tudor claims three pounds. Now, this horse has progressed from being a really rather modest uh, handicap chaser last season to improving last term, winning at both Warwick and Fakenham, where he won over three miles. And then he was second here over nearly three and a quarter miles at Haydock. He went really well, just beaten half a length in the end by Innes Free Lad in April. Now, he looked all over the winner, really, going down towards the last, just got worried out of it. I think that he is a horse who will be better at this longer trip. Now, he did have a run back against Brave Man's Game, which was a completely outclassed him. Uh, but he shaped well enough, I thought, in the race won by Strictly a Dancer at Cheltenham. And um, he's gone down three pounds for that. He's at a track that suits. And the extra three furlongs, I think, could bring out quite a bit more improvement in him. And I also note that he's likely to be suited by the good to soft ground. So a lot going for him. The future is bright. Now, I'm suggesting you bet him each way, even though at the time of this recording, Friday uh, lunchtime, he's only a nine to two shot, which is slightly shorter than I would normally recommend each way. But I've noticed he's drifting with a few firms, so I'm quite optimistic you'll get at least five to one. And it wouldn't surprise me that by the time of the race, you might see some 11 to two. So do shop around and use your odds um, comparison sites to try and find the best odds on offer in the marketplace. So for me, it's the future is bright, for Christian Williams and Jack Tudor in the Haydock 1240, the three and a half mile handicap chase. Now, just over half an hour later, the 115 race is a two mile, three furlong handicap hurdle. 50,000 quid up for grabs and 10 runners at Haydock. Good to soft, of course, and Harry's fr Harry Fry's, our surprise, um, is likely to go our favourite here. He was just beaten at Weatherby three weeks ago on his handicap bow. He's gone up three pounds but has got only 10 stone. He's right on the 10 stone mark, likely to be a seven to two favorite, um, according to the predictions. And he could be a tough nut to crack off just 10 stone, let's be fair, on only his second handicap run. And Hamilton does really well. Great uh, Northern Borders trainer. Tommy Zoska represents her. He's a good horse. He beat Christopher Wood uh, quite comfortably at Kelso last season. He's just two pounds worse off with that rival. Uh, but has been a beaten favourite on both runs so far this term. So as yet, he hasn't quite sparked. And because of that, this horse who finished third in last year's Scottish champion hurdle in April um, is one that I'm going to pass over. Uh, fourth in that Scottish champion hurdle there was Calico for the Skeltons. He's now three pounds lower. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes on his first start since having a wind breathing operation. Um, and... Um, He's had a break of five weeks and he could well do better. Um, Donald McCain saddles two here. And they include the top weight Navajo Pass, who some of you may remember caused a bit of a shock last season when he beat no less than former champion hurdler Bouverdere here in a two-miler, the grade two, the new one hurdle. Um, he then went on to finish third to Goshen in the grade two Kingwell hurdle that we counted in February. Um, and Theo Gillard is claiming five pounds off the top weight. So I think he is the good depth. Well, the weight sells its own story. He's the class act in the race. But Donald McCain also saddles in the same ownership, a horse called Mackenberg. And Mackenberg is my choice, trained by Donald McCain and the amount of um, Brian Hughes, of course, um, a brilliant uh, northern based jockey. Now, Mackenberg has won four of his 10 starts, two of those came from his three runs in bumpers and his two from seven over hurdles, but also a further four times placed over hurdles. So he is a tremendously uh, reliable and consistent performer. He won three times last season and he was fourth in the grade two dovecut hurdle at Kempton in February to Cape Gentleman over two miles. But he does seem to be a better horse over this uh, longer trip. And I think the two mile three furlongs is going to be ideal. Um, he was a pleasing third to half a piece at Weatherby over this trip three weeks ago. And that should have just about put him spot on, in my view. Um, so with the step up in trip, with the fact that he's fitter than he was first time out, I would imagine. He's only got 10 stone four, really good racing weight. 
is in the uh, same ownership uh, as um, the top weight, Navajo Pass, who could take them along at a really good clip. And the yard is in good form. I think Mackenberg's got a proper ch chance and he is a 13 to two shot uh, each way at the time of this uh, recording. And that's with quite a number of firms. So Mackenberg in the three o'clock at Haydock. And then to my final choice, which is a big priced one. Uh, 2.25 is the time at Haydock of the three mile handicap hurdle. And this is a big prize, 100,000 pounds is up for grabs. And not a surprise to see 16 runners going for glory here. The going is good to self, they're betting around 11 or two the field. And there's an eye catching Irish Raider here for the Emma Mullins team called Right Place, Right Time. He won a three mile Ferry House beginners chase on November the 2nd. And he's got Harry Kimber on board claiming seven pounds, which means He'll run off nine stone nine. That's a weight Harry can do. So he's got a featherweight and he's got a big chance. Uh, right place, right time for the Irish. Now, Orby's legend represents Philip Hobbs and he won three of his last four, including uh, one or two interesting races. Uh, he has gone up eight pounds for winning the uh, grade three silver trophy at Chepstow over nearly two and a half miles. But will he have the stamina for what's like to be a really honestly run three mile handicap hurdle, I'm not sure. Uh, Bass Rock, well, he represents an uh, old friend of this service, Sandy Thompson, uh, and he's on a hat-trick after wins at Aaron Carlisle. He's gone up a total though of 15 pounds. So he'll have to have really uh, improved. We've got John Joe O'Neill's flight deck um, for JP McManus, who won at Weatherby over three miles recently. He's only gone up three pounds, could well have been targeted for this race. And then one that a lot of punters, I'm sure, are going to latch on to, which is Dan Skelton's Riggs, uh, who was second in a grade three handicap hurdle over two and a half miles at Sandown last March. He's uh, now a pound lower. And um, interestingly, he was fifth of seven at Aintree last month. Um, and he rather caught the eye, staying on quite steadily in the closing stages. But he wasn't the only one who ran well in that race. Riggs, who was around an 11 or 2 chance at the time of this recording, finished fifth, but about, I can't remember exactly, half a length or a length in front of him in fourth place in that Aintree race, and also likely to improve because that was his first run of the season, was a horse called Winnings Everything. And he's my tip here. Winnings Everything, trained by Harry Fry and the Mount of Lork and Murtaugh. Now, he just had three runs last term, this horse. He fell... Um, on the first of them in a chase, and then they gave up on that. He was fourth of 12 in a, a fair race at Foss Last, which was a, a decent run over three miles in May off 130. But there's a couple of things that catch my eye. Now, the first one is that he's running for the first time since a breathing operation. So I'd be hopeful that that will, um, or, or rather he had a breathing operation prior to finishing fourth in that race to Mackleduff at Aintree. And it looked to me as though they were riding him just to see if his breathing was OK. Certainly was ridden out in the closing stages and certainly kept on well enough to finish just ahead of Riggs. Um, now, the point here is that now we know his breathing appears to be OK. Can you explain to me why Riggs is an 11 to 2 shot at the time of this recording? And yet winning is everything who finished just in front of him. And like Riggs was having his first run of the season and his first run back since a wind operation, he is 40 to 1, 4 40 to 1. How can that be that he's 40 to 1 and Riggs is 11 to 2 and he finished in front of Riggs and they're meeting on the same terms? Now, OK, Riggs certainly was tenderly handled and there is more improvement possibly. But surely, surely 40 to 1 is overpriced. And if for me you're... Uh, somebody that likes to look for value, then it stands out like a sore thumb to me that winning is everything, is overpriced, and I'm already in there at 40 to 1 and bigger uh, with uh, the machine. Uh, 40 to 1 about winning is everything. It's available at that price at the time of this recording with quite a few firms. So you may well be get, able to get on when you see this bulletin, and who knows, some of them may completely discount his chance for some unknown reason and go 50s. So shop around. It might prove that Riggs this time finishes in front of Winnings Everything, but surely at nearly eight times the price, Winnings Everything has to be the each way value. Plenty of firms will be betting five places at least 
I'm sure you'll find some offering six. So Winnings Everything is my fourth and final choice, 4 40 to 1 in the 225 race at Haydock on Saturday. So that's my four for this weekend. Check them out. Give them a code of looking at. Decide for yourself if, they think, if you think they're worth investing in. If you want shorter prizes, go to freebets.com. But for this week, that's enough from me. I'll look forward to you joining me again at Sportsbet, same time next week. Bye-bye for now.